Thank you, Dr. Held and Sharon, and kudos to you, the wonderful staff and the leadership of ETA for this magnificent and outstanding event. Ivor and I are happy to be with all of you here tonight to celebrate 20 years of accomplishments of this remarkable organization whose impact on our community has been transformative. And Ivor and I are proud to be champions of ETA's grand vision to continue to grow and expand in order to meet the growing needs of our community. We thank every one of you for being here tonight. Thank you for stepping under the big tent of ETA or Hell to show your solidarity and support, and especially at this extremely busy holiday time. A couple of weeks ago, we had another party. It was the last night of Hanukkah. The house was so festively decorated. The Hanukkiyot were lined up at the window, resplendent with the brilliant light of eight candles in each one. Delicious aroma of the traditional foods and delicacies of Hanukkah wafted through the house. And as family and friends started to arrive, the excitement was palpable as we shared music and song, conversation and laughter. I was meeting many of the people for the first time that night because the party was not in our house. It was at 12655 Emelita Street in Valley Village, one of Etta's now five residential homes. But the warm welcome by the residents and the open embrace from their parents and siblings and relatives, their devoted caregivers and dedicated counselors created an immediate sense of real, real family. Whether we were from Iran or South Africa or Mexico, whether we had come from all the many diverse Jewish communities throughout the greater Los Angeles area, everyone bonded with affection and appreciation to ETA for providing an inclusive environment in which every one of us, regardless of our age, our abilities, our aptitudes, could just be ourselves and feel comfortable in our own space. It was absolutely natural and perfectly, wonderfully normal. It leads me to reflect. What does a person need in life to feel fulfilled and happy? Maslow's hierarchical, uh, uh, famous hierarchy of needs, theorizes that first the most basic physiological needs, food, sleep, water, shelter, must be met before an individual can even desire the higher needs of love and then esteem and then self-actualization. But that theory was seriously challenged by Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor who devoted his life to studying, understanding, and promoting meaning. Viktor Frankl said of his own experience that the real lesson learned in Auschwitz and the other Nazi concentration camps was that those who were oriented towards meaning and a purpose that must be fulfilled in the future by them were those most likely to survive. In other words, says Frankel, the most important, the first thing is to transcend oneself and live in order to give. As we have seen the worthy honorees tonight, Michelle, Moshe, Michael, certainly understand that well. I had the pleasure of welcoming Michael Baruch and a group of his friends to the Museum of Tolerance to show them the new exhibit on Anne Frank. The experience concludes with a quotation by Anne from her famous essay, Give, reflecting the Jewish values of Tzedakah and Chesed with which she grew up. Anne wrote, how wonderful it is that no one has to wait a single moment but can start right now to gradually change the world. The honorees tonight, by giving of themselves, are certainly making a profound difference. When I met Moshe Binnenfeld, we had a most wonderful conversation, and I asked Moshe, what do you enjoy most about your new role in ETA? 
he answered me without the slightest hesitation, I am so happy that I can give. And Moshe's words crystallized for me in that moment why our involvement with Etta is so meaningful. To be sure, we derive satisfaction from contributing to a worthy cause. But frankly, that's our responsibility and our obligation. The real, real privilege is to enable and ennoble others, however differently abled, to give of themselves and to empower them with the knowledge that they are not receivers all their lives, but they are appreciated for the value of what they give with love and with dignity. In a very real sense, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And for Ivor and I, we consider it a blessing for which we are humbly grateful. Thank you.